Yo, what is going on guys? We are finally back now for the updated tier list of July. I apologize, this one is a few days late, but because of all the craziness before the month even started with the sign of the fun deals, I'm sure you guys can forgive me. Been a lot of content to be making. Um, but before we go ahead and get into some of the changes to this uh, iteration of the tier list, we gotta go over the standard disclaimers, which is, you know, take this video for what it is. It's just a tier list, my channel's opinion, my opinion, Plus, your guys' influential comments make uh, a lot of big changes to the tier list. And we make this as a channel tier list together. But, uh, you know, this is not the holy grail, the holy bible of MCOC. All this is meant to be is a tier list to help you in a pinch with a nexus choice, a rank up choice. Just try to help you uh, rank or take the best champion. Because this game is becoming more and more hyper matchup specific, which means basically it's all about bringing in the right counter to the right fight. So one champion is not gonna knock off all those boxes unless you're you're talking Hercules, you know, <laughs> or someone super crazy like that. But uh, yeah, all right, let's go ahead now, get into some of the changes to the list. So we first of all have a new emoji and that is just uh, the stone face, basically. This just means a powerful relic uh, that can really enhance this champion. Uh, so this is a, you know, a brand new emoji. So if you guys have any ideas for other champions that have a really good relic, you know, let me know in the comments. We can start adding some more of these emojis to some other champions. I, I went through the whole list and I added a few, but you know, my relic knowledge is definitely limited. And then we still, the, the latest addition on the last list was the little juice box emoji, which basically just means a champion is available as a seven star and uh, that can kind of juice them up a bit. For example, some champions really benefit from being a seven star because of stat focus. You know, they can focus their stat on something that they really lacked and that can really, really help a champion. For example, raising critical rate on a champion that doesn't crit a lot or you know uh block penetration on a crazy defender which there was a rank up mainly for that reason which we will get to but uh, yeah those are the newest emojis on the list then i just changed some of the text a little bit up here so th uh the f tier a dire need of a buff that was stay the same a b tier barely in use that stay the same then a t a t a tier here <laughs> so i was trying to say uh these champions you know they have situational uses then we get to the S tier. This used to be God tier. Change the name to just the Supreme tier. Because these champions are supremely good. And there's a couple of Sorcerer Supremes in here too, I think. Um, and yeah, these champions have, you know, plenty, plenty of uses. These are great champions. They can do a lot of things. Then as we move on, we have the SS tier, the Celestial tier. These are the go-to options. You know, when you see something, these are the champions you think of that immediately can counter it and are good options. Then, you know the top of the line triple s tier these are the cream of the crop champions these are some of the best of the best but not the absolute best because the absolute best champs are in a new tier down here the all above tier which we will circle back to this at the end of the video and we're going to limit this to, i decided to limit this to three champions per class and so you guys can let me know we'll, we'll always keep this at three champions or we'll try to uh like basically top three best champs in their class uh and there's only one class here that doesn't have three so you guys can help me decide that third spot uh it's teaser it's for science um and uh yeah we'll like i said we'll, we'll do that at the end of the video after we go through all the other classes all right that's uh all the new stuff all the disclaimers let's go ahead and get into some of the new champs now all right, guys, so another slight disclaimer, just starting off with Lady Deathstrike here. She is landing in the Supreme tier. That I didn't get a chance to play either Danny Moonstar or Lady Deathstrike uh, this month. I There's a little bit of a problem getting them on my CCP account. Then when I finally did, you know, the whole Sun and the Fun Cyber Weekend, or sorry, July Weekend stuff started. And I've just been so busy that I never really got a chance to test them. I think I want to do like a testing stream maybe on them. But um, yeah, so I haven't had a ton of first-hand experience uh especially with lady deathstrike but um I, I do know a fair bit about her and i think placing her in the supreme tier is an all right place to start i think she definitely has the potential to go over to the celestial tier however i think it's just a bit too early especially for me uh she has some really crazy utility in being able to just take specials to the face and then just regen it back very very odd play style very interesting though seems like so much fun to play saw a lot of my my friends grind for her in arena 
Uh, she, you definitely do want her to be awakened. That awaken ability uh, is going to lower the number of hits required to gain an armor up and increase the max stack, uh, which is very good for her. Uh, and then, you know, you can just get more potency on your ruptures and uh, yeah, more, even more with the ruptures over here. Lady Dust Strike, man, she's very cool. She's also a domino counter, I believe. Um, where's that? Yeah, against mutants, Lady Death Strike's ability actually cannot be modified. Just for that ability alone, like, <laughs> that is very good. Just being a good domino counter at release, that's a big deal. You know, that's very useful to have in any Battlegrounds deck. Uh, I'm not sure how she's going to be as a defender. Um, I didn't give her, the, you know, the defensive icon. Maybe it's warranted. I don't know yet. I really haven't gotten a chance to fight her yet, especially in Battlegrounds. I fought Danny a couple times, so I, I kind of know how good of a defender she is from, from that experience, but Lady Death Strike's newer, so it's it's harder. Um, so let me know what you guys think about her defensive capability. And yeah, if you think Lady Death Strike is deserving of a promotion, let me know. Do you think the Supreme Team is a good start for her? Uh, really, really, really would appreciate your guys' feedback on this one because like I, I don't have a ton of experience. I do have more experience with Danny. Speaking of, let's go ahead and switch over to Danny Moonstar. So she's landing in the Celestial tier, a tier ahead of Lady Death Strike, and that's for a couple of reasons. Uh, real quick, let's go over the emojis she got. So she definitely wants to be awakened and high sig. It's huge for her because uh, if a neuro shock or stunning buff is removed for any reason other than expiry. Uh, up to 100% chance to inflict a Neuroshock passive dealing 7,800 energy damage over 8 seconds, not affected by ability accuracy reduction. So at max sig, this is a 100% chance, basically, to just completely shut off Nick Fury's life, you know, Hercules' immortality. Like, sh Danny Moonstar is basically the best counter to cheat death mechanic champions, which is... A huge a huge piece of utility it makes her the best nick fury counter in the game which is massive because i i firmly believe nick fury is like overall probably the best battlegrounds defender just having two full lives makes him just so insane but danny can completely counter out that second life and she can do it easier and with a lot more finesse than Penny Parker and Toad can. Yeah, they can do it. They've been able to do it, but you don't see it that often. Um, it's just not as good. But Danny, she makes it look easy. And I've seen like 40 second Nick Fury kills, like just super, super impressive stuff. Um, she's crazy. And she's quickly moved up on like the, the champions that I ban. If I see a Daddy Moonstar, I ban her <laughs> because, you know, I just took Nick Fury to rank five. She's worthy of that ban. She's very, very powerful. Uh, we also have uh, the seven star juice for her and Lady Deathstrike because both are available as seven stars. Shout out to Andy. Buddy pulled both of them somehow. Uh, I don't even, can't even get a six star. Uh, and then also the relic uh, emoji here. And I, and I think this was actually kind of why I, I started putting it too. It's because of Danny Moonstar. Because she started this whole, you know, the, there's been... If you guys missed uh, the, the drama, let's call it, basically, basically with the Gambit Relic. So the Gambit Relic was bugged, and it's just super crazy, especially on Danny Moonstar, just letting her get these crazy crits in her special too, just so much damage. Um, but basically, the Gambit Relic was bugged for lower star levels. It was giving too much crit rate, I guess. Only the six-star Relic should be giving off that amount of increased critical rate. Um... So it, it got nerfed, uh, or bug fixed, or whatever, you, you know, Kabam Lingo wants to call it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, six-star Gambit Relic on Danny Moonstar. Oh my goodness, dude. Wow. It's it's crazy. She is nuts. She's firmly landing in the Celestial tier, and I think I think there's room for improvement. I, I think we could see her go to the Omnipotent tier. This I don't want to put her there just yet. I would really like to hear your guys' thoughts and feedback on, on her, and uh, what do you guys think of this ranking? Before I, you know, I locked in uh, the omnipotent tier on that one. I'm still a bit unsure. Like I said, I don't have the first-hand experience to really put her here just yet. So, but I think starting in Celestial tier, tier is high, very high praise and uh, really great. And I put her at the top of it too because I think she, she is like top of all these champions. These tiers aren't really by like, you know, the Cable's number one here and Nightcrawler's the last one here. You know, it's not really like that, but. Uh, with Danny here, I do think she definitely is the top of pretty much 
most of these champions. Um, very impressed with her, especially just the ability to counter Nick Fury and other Chi Death champions. It's huge. So that's uh, Danny and Lady Death Strike. Now let's go ahead and get to just some overall changes, and we'll start at the top of the list. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and get started with the Mystic class. We've had a few promotions here, and so I kind of alluded to one of these at the start of the video, and that is Seven Star Mangog. Um, or not, well, that's the reason this is promotion. He's got that seven star juice, guys. If you have pulled a seven star Mangog, I recommend taking him to rank two. If you're at all focused on battlegrounds or play battlegrounds, really at all, seven star rank two Mangog is going to cause your opponent a lot of problems. Trust me. Seven star Mangog is just crazy. And one of my most wanted seven stars, actually. If I got him, I would rank two. <laughs> For sure. The dude is just such a menace. That block damage with the stat focus for the, uh, the, uh, what you call it? Block penetration it is just disgusting on him, man. Especially the L2. It, oh, I took one with just my, like, my torch. I was just taking so much damage. Like, it, it's crazy. So, this is mainly a defensive rank up, uh, or promotion on the list. But it's warranted. Mangog, just defensive monster if you got a seven star i am jealous of you <laughs> so that's uh that's our first promotion the one i was alluding to before then we have two other promotions and so that's juggernaut juggernaut being promoted from the celestial tier to the omnipotent tier juggernaut is just one of the biggest battleground nukes in the game period he is just crazy this juggernaut can take like we said we are talking about how crazy nick fury is right Juggernaut can take Nick Fury in under 50 seconds or around that, killing both lives. Like, that's how much damage he's doing. He's taking Korgs in, like, 45 seconds. Like, Juggernaut is just absolutely freaking redonkulous. And he has his own relic. That That's when relics are really crazy, when, like, the relic is the champion themselves. Usually they get a massive benefit. And Juggernaut is a prime example of this. There's a Juggernaut relic that if you put it on Juggernaut, it's just so many more benefits to him. It, it's just crazy. I recently got a five, I got a six star Juggernaut relic, but the awaken, the innate ability on it is, is very powerful. Um, so I'm, I'm instead using my five star awakened relic put on my juggernaut but my juggernaut's only rank three I, I was gonna take him to rank four with all the deals but i did so many other rank ups he got the short end of the stick but i think he is next i think it's either gonna be juggernaut or omega red going to rank four next um so yeah juggernaut worthy of this tier basically I, he is kind of a pure attacker but honestly people have put him on defense against me before and uh, he's caused a little bit of problems a slight problem so he's like it's crazy because Juggernaut actually used to be a better defender before his buff. <laughs> that's the, that's the really weird thing, but he's not a total potato on defense, but he's definitely not not the best defender out there. But in a pinch, he can sort of work. Um, but speaking of defense, America Chavez, holy crap. She is one of the best two-way champions in Battlegrounds. Like, it's just crazy. She is so annoying on defense such an annoying defender and now after her buff she is just i've seen just crazy gameplay and crazy scores from buffed up america chavez and i'm only talking like rank four six stars if you get a seven star chavez i think i think that's one of my most desired seven star pulls um her and mangog both or you know awakening sasquatch just Man, I just want like a seven star mystic crystal. That's what I'm trying to open right now. Cause it's just so many good mystic seven stars. It's crazy. Um and Chava is good on both attack and defense. She would oh, she'd be an insta rank too if I pulled her. Um I, I don't know about it would be a little annoying unduped, but I, honestly, even undo, I think it's still warranted. She she's just crazy. She is just freaking crazy. So that's America Chavez. And Jug's being promoted to the cream of the crop, Omni, Omnipotent Tier, Triple S. And Hood and Wiccan, we added these guys last tier list. Let me know what you guys are still thinking of that. Do you think that decision aged well? All right, let's go ahead and move on now to the Mutant class, though. So let's start with the promotion, or sorry, Demotion. 
So Cable got demoted. Cable was originally in the Celestial tier, but I demoted him because I don't see anyone use Cable ever. You know, he he's completely and utterly dependent on the Apocalypse synergy. Uh, without having Apocalypse on the team, Cable is a potato. With the Apocalypse synergy on the team, you know, then he's useful. But, you know, I just, I, th I think he, he was just taking up, the mutant class is good, man. There's a lot of good mutants. He was just taking up the space here and uh, had to demote him. So Cable in the Supreme tier, still a good tier to be in. And then we had actually a promotion here, Nightcrawler, getting promoted from the Solid tier to the Supreme tier. Mainly for his defensive prowess. Nightcrawler is still a great defender, man. You take him to rank 4, put him in your deck, he is going to cause problems. And he's not the worst attacker. He's really not. He's underrated on attack. He's not, you know, he's no he's no kitty pride on attack. But he's not as bad as you would think on attack. He can switch his form to the swashbuckling mode and uh, play more offensive. So there's a Nightcrawler promotion. Again, mainly for the defensive potential, though. And then we had a storm promotion. There's quite a few comments asking for the storm promotion. And I uh, that's why I, part of the reason why I took Cable out to just kind of make room um, for storm. So there we go. Storm and Celestial Tier. Then we had a Gambit promotion. Um, There's one really passionate comment about Gambit, which is good to see. And again, the whole Gambit relic is good. It's a Gambit relic. So of course, it's going to be really good on Gambit himself um seven star gambit i recently pulled a seven star gambit i've seen some other people take seven star gambit up to rank two seen him doing some good stuff he can take a tumas i'm pretty sure which is you know the uh the new biggest baddest defender around so i think gambit stock is going up man and i think this uh the celestial promotion is a hundred percent warranted and then one other promotion here from the celestial tier into the omnipotent tier and that's my boy bishop so, man, Bishop, he's pretty good. <laughs> he's pretty good, especially as a 7-star. You can increase his crit rate, which is uh, you know pretty helpful on offense for getting more crits on the special 2. Because uh, if that special 2 crits, it's nutty. He is a 7-star. That 7-star juice, man, it's nice. Um, he is a great defender. And uh, the Storm Relic is really solid on Bishop, which I just put on my 7-star. So, 7-star Bishop, man, he's looking good. He's looking really good. Um, be on the lookout for some 7-star Bishop gameplay. That's uh, all I'm going to say with that one. Leave it at that. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to the Science class. So, barely any changes here. Only one. And that is uh, Hulk. Hulk uh, got promoted from the Celestial tier to the Omnipotent tier. I've been hearing lots of really good stuff about Hulk. Uh, he can kind of double as a as a defender. He does have... I didn't have the... Should I put the defensive icon there? Yeah, honestly, yeah. Um, he's not the best defender out there. But he's, he's not a bad option. He's pretty bulky. He's pretty tanky. If they make a mistake, he's going to punish it. And he does have an unstoppable that can kind of catch people off guard if they don't know what they're doing against him. Once he triggers like 15 gamma, I believe it is. Uh, still, I don't even think I've ever played Hulk after the buff. I was really hoping that I'd pull a 7 star. And that's kind of how I could experience the buff. Still haven't. I'd love to get a 7 star Hulk. Uh, I know Brian has one. I think he's going to take him to rank 2. So, Hulk's been pretty impressive. Here, nothing but good things. So, I uh, decided to promote him to the Omnipotent tier. All right, let's go ahead and move on to tech. Again, not a lot of uh, any change here. We've got Lady Deathstrike in the Supreme tier, which I already talked about. And there's really only one promotion, and that is uh, Mysterio from the Supreme tier up into the Celestial tier. So again, Mysterio, another one of those champions that's kind of went under the radar for a very long time, but it's always been a well-rounded champ. But now he's a seven-star. And set my, my good buddy Zarafa took his Mysterio unduped to rank two and i i do a lot of friendlies with rafa i probably played like five or six of them yesterday alone um and i've been fighting that mysterio and it's not even with you know the best hulk link, or sorry the, the best counter think about who would be the best counter battle rounds for mysterio you know hulkling hercules definitely come to mind as two of the best i have 565 hulkling and 565 hercules and even still 
it's not easy. It's definitely not easy. It's very easy to make mistakes and take a lot of damage and come out with less than 75% HP. So, uh, Mysterio's pretty nuts. And uh, I've seen Zeroth use him on attack as well. Basically, just get to a special 3 with Mysterio. You get a ton of attack rating. Do a couple combos. Fight's over. Average Battleground fight is just over. And, also, Mysterio is one of the OG... One of the OG domino counters. Uh, Mysterio's ability actually cannot be lowered. So he has no problem fighting domino. He takes no of none of the uh, the damage from her signature ability. The, the critical failure damage. So yeah, man. Mysterio stock going up as well. Put him in the Celestial tier. Uh, we'll see how that one ages. Let me know what you guys think about uh, that one. And the Bishop promotions. Uh, very interested to hear your guys' thoughts on those. Seven stars definitely have a big input on that. All right, let's go ahead and move on now to the skill class. So, again, not a ton of changes here. Really just one, and that was Aegon. Finally decided to take Aegon from the Celestial tier and just put him in, in this tier. Um, Aegon is that guy, you know, fully built up. He's, he's arguably the best champ in the entire game. We just don't really have content to reflect that right now. Uh, but hope Kabam has teased and teased that we're going to be getting new endgame content. So, hopefully that uh, kind of brings the Aegon Surge back, because I really do like Aegon, man. He's one of the coolest looking champs in the game. He's a Kabam original. He has such a cool story of being one of the very first champions to win the contest of champions, like, in in, in the lore of the game. Like, uh, I, I think what we really need is an Aegon 2099, or, like, a new kind of crazy Aegon. That'd be, that'd be sick, man. One that's not dependent on, you know, super ramping in endgame content. Um... And maybe you can give a synergy to the OG Aegon that, you know, makes it a little bit um, faster ramping or something. But, uh, yeah, Aegon definitely deserves a spot. And, uh, yeah, that's the skill class. All right. Then just, the, I don't think there's a single change in the Cosmic class. So now we can go ahead and shift to this here, the above all tier. Let's go get into that. All right, guys, now we get into the best part of this video, and that is the brand new above all tier. And like I said at the start, we're going to try to be limiting this to only three champions per class. So this is a very competitive tier with limited spots. So these are the best of the best, the best options in the game for tackling majority of fights that you will encounter. You want to take these champions to the highest of ranks. So let's, let's start with Mystic. We have Absorbing Man. And uh, so this, this tier is a little bit different. I did try to do it in order of best at the top and going in descending order. So Absorbing Man is at the top here in Mystic. I firmly believe that Absorbing Man is the best Mystic champ in the game. Um, but a caveat to that, you know, is he does have the skill, take skill to play emoji. Now that, I think he's the best champ, Mystic champ in the game. That's with a complete... And full understanding of light intercepting because if you can't let intercept absorbing man's probably not going to be the best mystic champ in the game in a player's hands that cannot fully utilize him to his maximum potential but if you can oh my god dude absorb man is just so happy and, and even if you can't light intercept you can't use absorb man to his fullest potential i still think he 100 percent deserves to be here just based off of how strong he is and his base abilities he has just the best energy resist and physical resist in the game and you can just select those for any given fight he has a laundry list of immunities in those both those given forms plus even can get poison immunity through a synergy absorbing man is just so redonkulous man uh, first champion of the year um my favorite champion of the year so far and just he's just set the bar so ridiculously high he's just so freaking good on offense and on defense, he's caused so many problems. Uh, he's killed so many people <laughs> throughout the, his time being in the game already. Like, it's just, it's crazy. So many people have timed out to him. His regen is nutty. Speaking of that regen, I was so surprised when his regen didn't get toned down offensively. The, I use this guy all throughout 8.2 for so many fights. He's basically a built-in potion factory. As soon as you start getting low on health you uh, consume your morph charges you get a regen based on missing health and you just start healing so much it's crazy man it's so crazy so that's why absorb man's there 
Then we got Dr. Doom, tried and true, best mystic, was the best mystic in the game for ages. You know, he's aged well. Like I said, I think Absorb Man's taking that title from him, but he's still Dr. Doom. Then this last spot, we have Rintra. Now, this is very controversial. This might be controversial to a few. We're missing Tigra. Now, you can go ahead and just swap Rintra out for Tigra if you're skilled with Tigra. I think that if you know how to play Tigra, she 100% deserves to be here. Uh, and you can just swap her out with Rintra. The great thing about Rintra is he's a poor man's Tigra. That's basically how I like to think of Rintra. He's poor man's Tigra. You don't have to have any skills. You can play Rintra. You know, he's very user friendly. The worst thing that's going to happen to you is you're going to get too much power and you're going to go to a special three. That's it. You know, if you mess up with him, that's what's going to happen. Um, but and the, and the great thing about Rintra, opposed to Tigra, is he is a far and beyond better defender. So he doesn't take skill to play, whereas Tiger does. He still can get similar results. And yet, he's one of the beefiest champs in the game on defense. Just uh, an absolute brick wall of health and just such a tank to fight. So I think Grincher definitely deserves this spot. But again, if, if you are like in the top 1% of Tigra players or of people that can use Tigra, then for sure, she definitely deserves to be here. 100%. 100%. But that's very few people, and uh, like I said, Rintra takes no skill to play, a little bit, but not much, and doubles as an incredible defender. So I think he he firmly deserves this spot in the Mystic tier. All right, let's move on to Mutant. We got Kitty Pride leading the charge. Uh, one of the absolute just best and most broken, busted champs in the entire freaking game. Speaking of Tigra, with that Tigra synergy, she can basically just stay in invulnerable. For entire fights and just take absolutely no damage from anything just keep phasing staying unblockable while you're phasing you're indestructible it's just beyond broken plus the most suicide friendly champ in the entire game like i said you can stay basically invulnerable so any debuffs on you you're just healing with willpower and you throw your specials when you're phased you don't take the recoil damage so she's just bonkers then we have archangel archangel man it's crazy to see how fine he's aged in the contest, and uh, it's pretty ridiculous. One of just the best DPS damage per second in the game. The damage on Archangel is just nuts. If they can be bled, if they can be poisoned, Archangel's going to shred them. He's going to turn off their ability accuracy. Then we have Apocalypse. Now, Apocalypse uh, is just so good for long-form content, especially. You know, he can build up... It, become a full uh, evade counter he can build up immunities to bleed and incinerate quite easily he can make other mutants really powerful and he can make himself powerful by you know getting more charges and just increasing the special damage apocalypse is, is just such a beast i think he deserves a spot this was really tough though because you know there's some other really good mutants that i, that I wanted to put there like omega red red magneto but i i, I just these mutants are just so good. Um, I had to put them there. So let me know what you guys think. Do you do you agree with these mutant spots? Do you think Omega Red or Magneto should take one of these spots? Let me know. I was going to move on to Science. So this was the only class where I did not put in three champions. So Scorpion, best Science champion in the game. No one will ever change my mind on that. Scorpion is just absolutely ridiculous. Oh, we actually need to add an emoji to him as well. Scorpion is an incredible defender honestly probably one of the most underrated defenders in the game scorpion man that evade is so annoying it's very annoying to play around uh and it's very useful on offense as well that evade has literally won me battleground matches like i mess up i where i would take a full combo but no scorpion just evades and i'm back right back in the fight it just totally saves my butt that's happened to me many times Scorpion, just the ultimate science champ in the game. Uh, just basically a Swiss army knife of damage. You can pick whatever damage you need for whatever given fight. You always have access to Rupture. And the only champion in the entire game that is immune to Rupture is Scorpion himself. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, uh, think, take that in. He has a damage source that only himself is immune to. That's it. And again, same thing with his immunities he, he can have poison shock or rupture immunity two of those up at any given time incredible immunities pick his damage source the damage is incredible and then you can add synergies to this 
Venom synergy gives you Furies for the amount of debuffs you have on your opponent. So boom, big attack increase. Another synergy with Toad allows you to apply slow debuff on your heavy attack. As if Scorpion didn't need more utility. Well, boom, there you go. Just absolutely insane. He does need he doesn't need to be awakened, but you definitely want him awakened because then he has one of the best healing siphons in the entire game, which is just so powerful in Battlegrounds. Uh, especially with the changes to Battlegrounds. It, it the emphasis on health. Scorpion, I, I've literally had fights where I take one to two full combos from the opponent with Scorpion, but I still finish the fight with full health because I just heal it back. Like, it's just so incredible. And, of course, we have Human Torch, the ultimate mystic counter with his Nova Flames. This pretty, one's pretty basic. But then we have a third science spot, and I, and I really wasn't sure who to put here. Speaking of spot, I wanted to put spot here, but I just... I'd be my own bias. I, I, I don't think spot should be there. Um, I don't know. So, our chance we could put there, you know, Quicksilver, Overseer, Cassie, Spot, Titania, Spy 29, Hulk buff... Out of everyone here, like, Quicksilver kind of comes to mind, but I don't know. And Cassie kind of comes to mind, but I think she's still too new for that. And Quicksilver, I'm not, I don't know. So let me know who you guys think should fill that third science spot. Um, cause I just, I just was not sure. Was not sure. So let me know on that one, guys. Um, and then we have Tech. So here, this one is pretty easy. Ghost. You know, she was regarded as the best champ in the game for quite a while. Quite a while. Just so ridiculous. Uh, she's basically the older version of Kitty Pride. That's the way I like to, to think of Ghost and Kitty. Kitty's like the 2.0 version. Kind of basically what made Ghost so crazy was when you give her the synergies. She can, she can get unblockable specials. She can take no damage while phasing. Those are two things that Kitty has built into her own kit. Um, but if you have Ghost with those synergies, she's just basically one of the ultimate champs in the entire game. And also most suicide friendly champion in the game as well with the synergies you can phase the recoil you start the fight immune uh, to that bleeding poison and just turn them into damage um the thing about ghost though is she is a pure attacker she also does take some skill to play but um learning ghost isn't that hard definitely not as hard as like tigra um yeah we all know how good ghost is then we have nimgod uh i recently took nimgod to rank five i just love this guy so much he's the ultimate mutant slayer He's basically, you know, the Human Torch of the tech class. Slays mutants. But he's still really good outside of this. Like, I, for example, I fought, you know, Mortal Abomination in, uh, in, in Battlegrounds with him. Shreds it. I fought Quicksilver in Battlegrounds with Nimrod. He shreds it. Like, he's just, he's so good. Those passive shocks do so much damage. Uh, he's also good with Relic. I have the Sentinel Relic on my Nimrod right now, which gives him about 10% extra damage uh, against mutants. And then there's some other really good relics too. I think it's, I believe it's a Hulkbuster relic that gives him uh, increased shock uh, damage. So yeah, lots of good relics uh, that Nimrod can benefit from. Also, you know, friendly with the suicides, he gets massive damage increase on that special too. And of course, he's immune to bleed and poison. Then we have Future Ant Man, who was my first ever Tech Rank Five, and this might be a little surprising to see him in here. Uh, again, another 20, 2023 champion, second one with Absorb Man. But Future Ant Man, dude, he has just been. Absolutely, cra absolutely crazy, and the, the the nuttiest part of it all is he's he's bugged right now, and at, once that bug gets fixed, he's going to be even better than he currently is, offensively and defensively. He's going to become even tankier, and he's already been an MVP defender for me in Battlegrounds. So the fact that he's going to get even nuttier, uh, wow, I, I'm really excited. Like I said, I already got the rank five at Sig 200. He also does have a really nice relic. Uh, the green goblin relic really really solid for him um can benefit with his uh power drain and his regeneration buffs that he gets you definitely want him high sig uh max sig if you can he can basically become pseudo immune to bleed and incinerate he can shrug them off 90 percent faster and he gets regen uh when that happens yeah he's definitely got the uh defensive icon here because i i genuinely think future ant man is a better defender than he is attacker and like i said he's going to become even better once those balancing changes go through he's also very good with the the recoils the suicide masteries for sure uh it makes his special two damage hit even harder and like i said he can get rid of that bleed at the start of the fight very quickly and turn it into a regen so those are the top three best tech champs in the game i i'm very firm on these three um all three just absolutely incredible all right, let's move on to skill. So, 
We got Nick Fury, number one overall best skill champ in the entire game. I just took Nick Fury to rank five. You can see him right over there in my profile, along with Nim God and uh, Herc. Some of those shiny new rank fives. Um, and yeah, Nick Fury, I think he's just overall the best skill champ in the game. He's just so well-rounded. He's such a well-rounded character. Um, offensively, you know, with deep wounds, you definitely do want deep wounds if you're going to play Nick Fury offensively. It makes his light bleed last way longer, and that's where the bulk of his damage can come from. Especially if you're playing him first life. But I mean, both lives, the bleed damage is nuts. Um, so yeah, definitely want to have deep wounds with Nick Fury. And the damage is just absolutely bonkers. Um, the really great thing about Nick Fury as well is you can take him for like almost any matchup and still finish the fight with full health. Because you, especially in Battlegrounds, again, with health being so much more important now, if if you can play Nick Fury skillfully, you know, we should, we should put the skill icon here. Because if you can play him skillfully and end fights, if you basically the way you want to do it is get your opponent very low, get them to like twenty percent HP, then let them kill you. Then boom, your 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 health bar shoots right back up to full. Higher Signic Fury. Uh, the lower the the degen is, so you your health bar goes down quick slower, and then boom, end the fight. Boom, you're finishing the fight with like full health. For example, I've done this against like Mephisto. Nick Fury has, you know, no incinerate immunity to combat Mephisto, but you play the match skillfully, you can end the fight with a full yellow bar. And um, that's massive. And then, you know, on the flip side, Nick Fury is basically just the ultimate defender, especially, again, for Battlegrounds, because he has two full lives, two full health pools that you need to go through. Again, which is why Danny Moonstar is such a good ability. Um, and then we have Valkyrie. So I think Valkyrie is second best skill champ in the game um the problem is, is she's a pure attacker she's not nearly as well rounded as nick fury um but that's okay because she's basically like the new quake there's just so many fights where valkyrie just hits their block and just bypasses whatever it is for example uh hazard shift nodes where you hit the opponent you know you get a shock and then in 15 seconds you hit the opponent you get a bleed and you need to have someone who's immune to both those kinds of debuffs or you just bring valkyrie hit their block and you never get any debuffs on you and it's just ridiculous um and we also have the ninja cat here because uh if you can play valkyrie really maximize her combos it's crazy msd has a really great video on this showing how to fully ramp her in like 30 seconds uh highly recommend checking that out and it's nuts uh, and then also, you know, you definitely want to have uh, Max Sig with her because then with just one pierce, one pierce and one one bulwark effect, you can fully counter, you can become fully stun immune with that bulwark and you can fully counter unstoppable with that pierce. Valkyrie is by far beyond, up and beyond, the best unstoppable in the entire game because with just one pierce active, she counters it. It's not like a slow or anything where class advantage or disadvantage or anything. No. It's not, it's not passives, she's not limited to passives or buffs, no. It's just one pierce, you counter unstoppable. It's so simple, and that's what makes it the best counter in the entire game. Highly, highly rate Valkyrie. Then this third spot. This third spot, you guys gotta let me know on this one. I put Kingpin here, but honestly, a spot could go to Kate Bishop. So guys, uh, like I said, I already gave my reasoning for Nick Fury and Valk. I think they're one and two skill champs in the game. That third spot, though. Kingpin... Or Kate Bishop. Let me know which one you guys want to see there. Um, Kate Bishop is still very new, but I'm hearing so many people just absolutely in love with this character. So, I don't know. She does have a really sick relic. The Winter Soldier Relic can increase her cold snap damage by quite a bit, which is great. So, I, I don't know, man. Oh, and also, Valkyrie, there is a Valkyrie Relic, which is insane on Valkyrie. So, yeah, that Relic makes her even better. Um... But yeah, I don't know, man. Kingpin, should he be here or should it be Kate? Let me know, guys. And then we get to Cosmic. Now, Cosmic is just, you know, the simplest one. Hercules, number one. He's the number one best champ in the game. No one's disputing that. No one's arguing that anymore. Uh, simple as that. You know, extremely suicide friendly. Those recoils. Hercules is just insane with it. And uh, you definitely want uh, Max Sig. Definitely want him awaken, but definitely Max Sig just because you increase the duration of your immortality, which is massive. You can just stay alive forever. Then, of course, we have Hulkling and Gallant. I put Hulkling above here, but 
these guys are, are absolutely dead even in my eyes. Um, it doesn't matter. Either one can go first. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, they're, they're both just absolutely incredible on offense and defense. Just two of the best Battlegrounds champs in the entire game. Uh, and they both also get some nice benefit from some relics. So um, Hulkling, I have the six-star Gamora relic on my Hulkling. And this relic is so stupidly good for Hulkling because it increases his fury duration. So, you know, after you build Hulkling up, you drop the special two that's unblockable. You get two fury buffs. And that's your window to do your damage. But those... And uh, having higher sig on Hulkling can increase that duration barely. I think max sig is like an additional four seconds on the Fury or something, which is nice. But, you know, four seconds isn't that long. But it actually is. You know, one second is equivalent to probably like anywhere from like one to two hits in a combo. To having two Furies, three hits in a combo, that's like at least 30k damage for Hulkling. So... It actually is quite a big deal. And that Gamora Relic just allows those Furies to last even longer. So more duration in your full ham damage mode. It's just nuts. It's just nuts. And then Galen, the Relic I have him rocking, is the Thor Relic. And really just the main reason for that, I think it helps with some Fury buffs, which doesn't matter a ton. But the main thing with Galen here is that this Relic gives Galen a buff. And why that's so good is because anytime Gallon gains a buff, any buff, he gains 10 mass. So it's just easier to get to 100 to then get into the harvest with Gallon with that relic active. Really like having that. And I and I, I rely on that sometimes. For example, like this is kind of rare, but it's happened once or twice where I'm at 90 mass or I'm like 10 mass away and my standard combo wouldn't get me there. But I use the relic to get that last buff, last 10 mass that I need to enter the harvest, then at the end of the relic, you know, even against a stun immune opponent, for example, Nick Fury in his second life, that relic stun still applies, boom, then I slam down my planetary staff, and then I boom, I enter the harvest. So that relic is really, really great on Gallon, really help his rotation. And uh, yeah, guys, wow, I've been talking a lot about this final tier, 20 minutes for this final tier alone, but uh, I mean, hey, these are the best of the best champs in the entire game. This is the above all tier. And like I said, I'm pretty confident. I'm extremely confident in the cosmic ranking, extremely confident in the tech ranking. These two are, I'm 100% confident. And like, I don't think no comment, no, nothing can sway me to change these. I think these are, these are very, very accurate. Skill, Cave Bishop or Kingpin. I need help on that one. Science, help me decide who the third science champ should be in here. Mutant, I think, uh, I don't know. This one's a little tough because Omega Red and Magneto exist. And then Mystic, I think Azori Man, Doctor Doom, 100% deserve to be here. And it's really just a matter of, are you a Tiger aficionado or not? If you are, Tiger here. If not, Brinch right here all day. So guys, that is uh, gonna go ahead and do it for this tier list. Um, I hope you guys all enjoyed the July edition. A lot of, uh, a lot of changes to the, the way the tier list works. But... Um, yeah, I'm really happy with uh, with all these changes, how it came out. Going to stop rambling, going to go ahead and end the video. Really appreciate you guys dropping a like. All the support uh, on these tier lists, it means the world to me. Every month, this is by far my biggest video. So it just really gives me a lot of encouragement to keep making them. And uh, I just it, it means the world seeing those really big numbers, guys. Uh, so yeah, I really appreciate likes on these ones and all the comments. I will read every single comment on this tier list before I make the next one. There's less than 200 comments on the last tier list which made reading through them a lot easier, but that was definitely the lowest amount of comments we, I'd seen in a while. And I guess kind of just what that tells me is that the tier list is looking really good because there's not nearly as many comments, not as much stuff to change. And I, I agree. I think the tier list is in a really good spot right now. So thank you guys for all your input, all the support, all the help on creating this tier list. And I'll continue to do so every single month of the year. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoy. Peace out.